Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and welcome the 74th Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, His Excellency, the Honorable Glenn Youngkin. Ladies and gentlemen, 74th Governor of Virginia, Ben Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Please, please sit down. Thank you. Please, and I, did I catch you at the salad or dessert? Salad, it looks like. Or actually a, a variety in between. Um, well, thank you. It is so much fun to be with you. And to walk in here and to see this enormous collection of leaders from across the Commonwealth of Virginia is so encouraging. It is so inspiring. And so thank you for all being here and taking time to plan, to reflect, to inspire uh, future generations of Virginians. Thank you. It's just so much fun. I will tell you that um, the last two and a half years for all of you has not been great. I know. I know. And hard. I know many of you probably found yourself being the only one in a building answering phones and opening mail and uh, really responding to an unprecedented circumstance. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your, your just amazing leadership. From a, I guess from a CEO to a CEO, the way I think about this is I know the buck stops with you. And at the end of the day, you have an ex just an exhausted set of teachers. You have exhausted students. You have a mental health crisis that you're dealing with. You have a security crisis that you're dealing with. You have parents who have an unending, unending, and appropriate desire to be deeply engaged um, with lots of help, I know. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Because without you, Without leadership, that is a combination of advancing and leading from the front, but oh, by the way, serving and supporting, um, our schools would not be what they are today. And so thank you. Just an extraordinary moment. Um, we've had a very busy first six months. Oh, hello. We've had a very busy first six months. And I wanted to share a little bit with you what, uh, what has happened, because I think it reflects a universal commitment to advance education in Virginia, not political. And that's the best part about this, is that this is not a political party versus another political party. This is about Virginia's kids. This is about the future of our commonwealth. This is about teachers. This is about administrators. This is about principals. And uh, I'm going to start just by reflecting on teachers for a minute. You know, I still today think about Betty Weaver, who was my fourth grade teacher who taught me about uh, everything and, uh, in Midlothian, Virginia. And uh, Betty eventually got, Mrs. Weaver eventually had an elementary school named after her. But the impact that teachers have on our kids is uh, unending. And with parents and teachers partnering together, we can, in fact, see extraordinary, extraordinary things develop in children. So that's why it was so important in our day one game plan to recognize one simple fact is we needed to provide raises for teachers, real raises, um, raises that recognized the fact that teachers are underpaid. And so I was so pleased when the budget came to my desk that there is a 10% raise over the biennium. There's a $1,000 bonus in there for teachers. And it gives us a chance to step back and hopefully give you all the tools to say thank you and the tools to continue to recruit the best. Um, thank you. I also committed right at the beginning of, of uh, our administration that we were going to get involved at the state level in facility construction. And it's something that state government hasn't done. It's something that 
we need to do right now because we have the capacity to do it. It's something that has been overlooked for the longest time. I went to Bristol a few weeks ago and participated in the groundbreaking of a new elementary school in Bristol. And it's the first time that a new school has been built in the city of Bristol in 50 years. I'm going to say that again, in 50 years. By the way, how many of you all teach in a building that's more than 50 years old? Or are principals in a building that's more than 50 years old? Okay, we're coming. We are, we're coming. In this budget is $1.25 billion to support facility investment across the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's coming in three big chunks. First, there's $400 million in formula grants. These are grants. They're distributed based on student enrollment and local need. There'll be a minimum million dollar grant. Minimum million dollar grant. The second big chunk of this is school construction assistance. And that comes in a $450 million package that are competitive grants uh, to modernize. To be done in partnership, of course, with local school boards. And then the third piece of this is the Literacy Fund Construction Loan Program, another $400 million that provides loans out of the Literacy Fund in order to help schools fund construction. Um, this actually brings an interest rate problem an, uh, out of the equation where we can lend at a competitive rate, not at inflation-driven rates. $1.25 billion is just, this, just the beginning. Um, but I will tell you, it is something so important to get moving on because our children deserve, you all deserve, and teachers deserve the ability to educate in a facility that speaks to the importance of what's going on in that building and the children and the teachers that are there. I tell you that when I said early on that we were going to have the largest education budget in the history of Virginia, this is a big part of us, yes, indeed, having the largest education budget in the history of Virginia. We also have a job to keep our schools safe, to keep students safe, faculty safe, administration safe. And that's why, again, I specifically put an amendment into this budget to increase funding for school resource officers. And I was so pleased when over the two-year period, $45 million of incremental funding is in place to provide funding for 350 new school resource officers. Every parent, every teacher, every administrator, the people that every day you are in charge of, they should feel safe when they come to the, come to the uh, building that you run. And on top of that, the participation and the cooperation the school resource officers and local law enforcement is critical. It's critical. I know you all are middle school and high school principals, but we can't forget that what happens in the elementary school has so much to do with success in your buildings. That's why the Literacy Act was so important for the Commonwealth of Virginia. When we recognize that 42% of second graders in Virginia don't read at a proficient level and we know averages are bad, what does that mean for kids in particular underserved areas? What does that mean for kids that are behind already that are going to struggle to catch up and won't catch up without intervention? And so the Literacy Act is an incredibly important moment that focuses on the fact that if every child in Virginia is prepared, every child in Virginia can read by the time they get into third grade, their chances of success when you get them are beyond the limit of what the child can dream. But if they can't read when they get to you at proficient level, then it's challenge after challenge. And so on a bipartisan basis, the Literacy Act came together to provide standardized the science of reading curriculum across all Virginia, funding to make sure that teachers are trained, reading coaches, this is so important. And finally, what you'll hear from, and I'm sure you heard it from State Superintendent Baylor this morning, and you'll hear it from Secretary Gardera, data collection to report back and see progress to make sure that we are bringing students along at a proficient level. So important. Friends, if every child in Virginia can read when they're in third grade at a proficient level, think how fabulous every one of those kids' life will be.
But there were a lot of wins in this last legislative uh, period uh, and a lot of things to feel good about. But we have a lot of work collectively to do. And that's why when we recently published our commitment to Virginians, our commitment, which is, which is high expectations for excellence, high expectations for all of our students and all of our schools. Um, this is a moment for us to step back and make sure we know where we are. I consistently say that we can't know where we're going unless we know where we are. And it was an honest assessment of where we are. And we're just not where we all want to be. And therefore, let's recognize it, let's acknowledge it, and let's get moving. Let's get to where we want to be. And that's why when we look at statistics that reality like our second grade statistics in reading um, or similar statistics in third through eighth graders where we just see anywhere between 30 and 38 percent of our students who aren't reading at a proficient level, we see math scores that are declining, when we see uh, Virginia students not actually, getting, not actually getting the same AP credits that they used to get today, when we see performance and standardized tests where, we, where we've dropped um, six or seven places. Um, this, isn't a, this isn't an indictment, what this is is just a recognition that we've got to triple down in order to change things. We've got to bring resources and we've got to acknowledge that if we keep doing the same things over and over and over again, we won't change outcomes. And so let's try new things. Let's innovate. Let's bring me more resources. And let's collectively lock arms and change that and actually deliver for our children. I talk about all the time, we can raise the ceiling and the floor in Virginia right now. We can do both. That is our opportunity that's in front of us. And guess what? As principals across middle schools and high schools in the Commonwealth of Virginia, you're on the front line with us all. That's why I'm inspired to see all of you together talking about what you can do together, practices that you can share, uh, inspirational stories, about great accomplishments. And oh, by the way, a network that allows you to have a friend, a colleague, a mentor, a mentee, as you move through your careers. To address the troubling trends, we've made a commitment on seven key principles. These are our commitment. This is our commitment to all Virginians. And everything we do, everything you'll hear from our administration tax in to one of, these, one of these key seven commitments. First, to establish and maintain high expectations. High expectations for students, for schools, for ourselves, holding ourselves accountable. Second of all, to advance parent and teacher empowerment so they can work together to best serve students. Best serve students. Third, to demand zero tolerance, zero tolerance for discrimination, zero. It's one of these topics that if we say we're going to reduce it, then we've under, we've under, we've under aspired zero. Fourth, that we want to foster innovation, foster innovation in the education environment. Fifth, provide transparency and accountability so that each child is seen. How important it is, you know this, to see each child where they are and to have data to understand where they are and be transparent with that so that they can know what they need to succeed. Sixth, to ensure post-secondary readiness so that all learners can succeed in life. Whether it's a path to college, whether it's a path to a career, that's the great opportunity. And seventh, to protect and nurture freedom of speech and inquiry so that we can step into these discussions, step into them so that we can feel safe about having them so that we can have them, because we need to. These, these are the seven key principles in our commitment, in our administration, to make sure that everything we do touches into it. And whether it's our lab school initiative, which I think has just got an opportunity to provide great building blocks for innovation within the public school system, or if it's a personalized learning plan for every student, which you'll hear more about from Secretary Gardera later, that provides real insights and data so that every student, every parent, and every teacher can, can know where that student is. And therefore, there can be a real plan on how to best serve that student so that they can be successful as well. This is our commitment. 
So finally, I just want to say thank you. You finish where I started. Thank you for what all you do. Thank you for loving children in Virginia. Thank you for loving education. Thank you for all of the sacrifice that I know each one of you makes in the job that you do. Because at the end of the day, you know the principles of leadership. Show up. Inspire others. Take the heat when others won't and give the glory to others when, when everyone gets it. I know what you do. So thank you for doing it. Virginia's better off because of all of you. And uh, as I said when I started, I'm inspired that you're all together. That you're together here sharing ways to do it even better than you do. Please know that you actually have an administration here that is fully engaged in your success. State Superintendent Velo, Secretary of Education Gerdera, me as your governor, our entire cabinet. We spend time talking about education in Virginia every week, every week, because we want all of you to be successful. So thank you, God bless you, and I hope you have an awesome meeting. We'd like to thank you very, very much for being here today and sharing your words of wisdom and your support for the continued growth of all of our students here in Virginia. I'd like to take a moment to uh, introduce the head table and then we have some quick awards to do. Then we'll get on with our program of lunch. So at the head table here, uh, going from my left to right, we have three of our award uh, candidates here, here today. Uh, we'll announce them in just a moment. Uh, next is State Superintendent of Public Education, uh, Jillian Bailo. And of course, you uh, get the governor, and Dr. Ray and Randy Barrick is next to that, and then we have uh, Amy Gadera, our <coughs> um, Secretary of Education, and next is Archie Freeman, and then followed by uh, Dr. Carol Robinson. So we're going to go ahead and present those awards, uh, Dr. Carol Robinson, if you'll come on up and get started with that, please. While working with almost 1,000 middle school students grades six through eight may not be everyone's ideal work day, the 2022 Outstanding Middle School Principal of Virginia thrives on the energy, enthusiasm, and generosity of his young scholars and budding citizens. In fact, becoming citizens in the larger community plays a significant role in the culture and pride of our award winner school. Students, for example, work together to raise money for cancer research, obtain food for the local animal shelter, and donate toiletries to the local homeless shelter. Community partners diligently work with the principal to stock the school's clothes closet and food pantry and give haircuts for students. The faculty enthusiastically implemented the Ron Clark Academy, where one student noted, and you know how wise our students can be in eighth grade, that this academy, this house system, quote, helps kids with leadership and learning. Kids are excited and engaged in earning points. You can earn points by having good character, performing well in school, and other academic awards. I have noticed through myself and other students that not only are we more engaged in learning, but we are also learning leadership skills while having fun, end quote. Just as the student noticed, Leadership has benefited everyone in the school. Teachers worked with the principal to develop a data team structure. Students actively participate in leadership opportunities, including being on the superintendent's student advisory council. One teacher proudly describes our award winner as a servant leader, quote, whose family-oriented mindset may be one of his greatest qualities as a leader. And one last note. When a student was losing his hair because of chemotherapy, our award winner shaved his head in solidarity. 
The superintendent of our outstanding middle school principal noted that his leadership actions have become so valuable, so valued that other schools in the division have replicated these efforts to support uh, families in need, affecting thousands of students every day. Our middle school award winner received his Master of Science in Educational Leadership from Radford University. Prior to that, he received two master's degrees from Virginia Tech in biochemistry and science education. He has been a member of VASSP, NASSP since 2016. Thank you, Carol. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in recognizing the, celebrating the 2022 Outstanding Middle School Principal of Virginia. The plaque reads, Virginia Association of Secondary School Principals hereby recognizes James Garst, Jamie, 20, 000, uh, 2022 Outstanding Middle School Principal of Virginia for exceptional service, dedication, and leadership as principal of Andrew Lewis Middle School, Salem School Division, June 28, 2022. Our 2022 Outstanding High School Principal of Virginia began his principalship in April 2019, and not even a pandemic could hamper his enthusiasm, vision, and leadership goals. Working diligently and collaboratively, he has used data, the expertise of his staff, and the support of many stakeholders to empower student learning. For example, spring of 2021, a program dubbed Rams Helping Rams, enlisted the support of student advocacy groups, teachers, school division support services, and parents to bring students to school on Teacher Workday Fridays to participate in credit recovery. This has resulted in 710 recovery credits and a graduation rate that increased from 91.7% to 94.4%. To keep the momentum going, when students physically returned to the school in fall 2021, our award winner created an instructional support team that identified three high-yield strategies for teachers to use in their classroom instructional programs. And in addition, for, the next, for those first four months, they engaged in 124 classroom walkthroughs to determine the implementation and effectiveness of those three strategies. In Algebra 1, for example, one struggling, uh, one struggling subject, the team found that these efforts resulted in a rise of pass rates for unit assessments from 75 to 80 percent. His superintendent noted that by, quote, leading with integrity, caring, and putting students and instruction first, he has literally turned about the school and created a family-oriented school climate in which every stakeholder has incredible pride. Our award winner earned his Doctor of Education in K-12 School Leadership from Regent University, where he continues his contributions to the profession as an adjunct faculty member and dissertation chair. He has been a member of VASSP and ASSP since 2015. Thank you, Carol. Again, ladies and gentlemen, please join us in recognizing and celebrating the 2022 Outstanding High School Principal of Virginia, Dr. Daniel Maiani, Lafayette High School, Williamsburg, James City. Again, the plaque reads. Hereby recognizes Dr. Daniel Maiani, 20, 2022 Outstanding High School Principal of Virginia, for exceptional service, dedication, and leadership as principal of Lafayette High School, Williamsburg, James City School Division.
Okay, I, I, I love my high school and middle school, but assistant principals have a special place in my heart. I'm just saying. That, that wasn't in the script. Feeling welcomed, safe, and cared for became the recurring theme from those who shared their thoughts about our 2022 Outstanding Secondary School Assistant Principal of Virginia. When staff morale plummeted during the pandemic, our award winners scheduled opportunities for shout outs of appreciation, spirit weeks, and raffles. And the best booster? door-to-door -door delivery of coffee and snacks by the administrators using their twinkly lit and glittered TCMS coffee cart. When her middle school students were struggling, our award winner implemented a three-pronged restorative re-entry plan that reinforced rebuilding relationships with peers and adults, fostered an environment of feeling welcome, safe, and successful, and focused on self-reflection that included identifying strategies to overcome social obstacles. The principal of our award winner noted that while our award winner, quote, doesn't, hate to, to, doesn't hesitate to cover a class or have a courageous conversation with a colleague, she makes sure that each student and staff member is loved and cared for always with a positive and cheerful demeanor. Our 2022 winner believes that, quote, we now have the opportunity to get creative meet students on their level, and focus more directly on each student's needs, end quote. For those of you who work with middle school students or have that age group as your own children, you know what a special time this is for the cognitive, social, behavioral, and physical development. Welcomed, safe, cared for, this is what each person needs and what our award winner brings to her school every day. The 2022 Outstanding Secondary School Assistant Principal of Virginia received her postmaster's graduate certification in educational leadership and policy studies from the University of Richmond and has been a member of VASSP, NASSP since 2017. Thank you again, Carol. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in recognizing and celebrating the 2022 Outstanding Se Secondary School Assistant Principal of Virginia. The plaque reads, hereby recognizes Charlie Breeden, 20, 2022 Outstanding Secondary School Assistant Principal of Virginia for exceptional service, dedication, and leadership as Assistant Principal of Tomahawk Creek Middle School, Chesterfield School Division, June 28, 20, 2022.